Hello, everyone, and thank you so much for joining us today for our mini webinar series on the golden record. Today is part one, the golden record, how do I build a golden record? I'm Sue Murray from Redpoint Global, and I'll be your host for today's quick event. In the interest of your time, we have divided this session into two sessions on the golden record. Today is about how do I build a golden record, and then part two will focus on what to do with your golden record. We do invite you to ask questions in the Q&A box, but to keep the session on time, we will follow up with those questions after the event. Now I'm pleased to introduce today's speakers. We have Chris Tomes, VP of Engineering Data Management at Redpoint Global, and Steve Zisk, Senior Product Marketing Manager at Redpoint Global. Steve and Chris, thank you for joining us to talk about the golden record, and now I will pass the discussion to you. Thanks so much, Sue. Welcome, Chris. Always nice oh, thank to you. talk with you and work with you. Yes, very nice. If I may, I want to start us off uh, just as a reminder. Our audience knows this, but to drill it in a little bit, when we're building a golden record, it's all about customer experience. Our goal in talking to you today is to remind you of how to transform, improve, extend, turbocharge your golden, your golden record in order to improve customer experience and uh, make your own customers much happier uh, and much more engaged with your brand. In that context, we recognize that customer experience is not the classic linear kind of a marketing journey where we've got a product, we put the product in front of you, we tell you what you need to do, and boom, you go and you buy the product. There's lots of different paths, lots of different possible ways that customers use to reach the, the conclusion and lots of different conclusions as well. It's not always about what are we doing to sell the next product. When you consider that there are issues with loyalty, with retention, with uh, customer promotion, voice of customer, returns, buy online, pick up in store kinds of, of journeys, uh, the classic linear, I'm going to simply buy something, receive it, and be happy with it kind of a journey no longer makes sense. Chris, if you don't mind, I'd love to have you expand on that a little bit and talk a little bit about all the, the steps that are needed in, uh, the, in software in order to understand what a customer's journey is and to deliver those moments that a customer is looking for. Sure. Well, Steve, you sort of hit on a pretty crucial point in the fact that you know, today's customer experience uh, is, you know, it's, it's not simple. It's gotten very complex, right? The proliferation of channels, uh, the proliferation of buying options, uh, throw in a pandemic, throw in other uh, sort of environmental or uh, socioeconomical issues. And, you know, there's a lot to try to understand about your customers and how to respond in, in, in a way that gives them the best and most pleasing experience. So, you know, even though it's complex, the golden record is really designed to help minimize that and simplify that and provide sort of a one-stop shop for you to go and gather uh, those uh, elements of information to be able to uh, react, to interact, and to message or to promote, uh, uh, you know, with the, with the customer. So if we sort of start at the beginning, you know, let's not think of Golden Record as a, as a, as a technology play or a, a data play. You know, it's as much process as it is technology. So really where we need to start is we need to start by defining, well, what are those elements of information I need in order to create the best customer experience? Where do I get those elements? Uh, and if I have multiple elements from different sources, what are the rules in which I pick those elements or uh, aggregate those information? Really, so this that's begins that's the process part of it, right? We've got to design the what is the golden record, what's it contain, what are the rules, and are those rules both understood across the organization and and, and approved, or is there buy-in across the organization? Right? So I think that's the very first place you got to start is is sort of the process side of it, of designing that golden record. So, the next is, oh, sorry, go ahead. Just a question on that. Those, those rules, are those rules for, you know, what goes into a golden record, what survives and what doesn't and so on, kind of universal rules, or are those things that may be different from one organization to another? 
Well, I, I think it's both, right? There, there's certainly uh, elements of information that you pr probably would see some common rules or common ways that you would ar arrive or derive that information. But typically what we've seen on organization to organization basis, uh, you know, there is there is varying degrees of, um, of differences in terms of how someone might arrive at uh, an element within the golden record. I and mean, so if we look at something like from a retail or transactional based uh, perspective of a golden record or an aggregation uh, or a summary that's tied to the golden record, you know, number of visits, revenue, per, you know, per total purchase amount, you know, those are pretty standard, right? You, you know, you, you take the total amount purchased, maybe you subtract the, 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 any, any ref, uh, returns or refunds. Um, but when you start getting into uh, you, you know, things like, well, what's the best email to use? You may see, differences across organizations. There may be things around source priority, right? There may be one source that has better information. You may be looking at engagement. You may be looking at responses to those emails. Has it, has it bounced? Have they unsubscribed? Uh, when's the last time uh, they engaged with it? What shows the most engagement? So those are kind of things that could, could uh, vary between uh, organization to organization. Thanks a lot, Chris. And uh, I interrupted you. I think you were oh, no going on to talk a little more about some of the other pieces of the process. And that's it's a really interesting story of how we build out these processes and how we help customers to understand and optimize them. Right. So once the process has been in the rules and, and sort of the, the genetic makeup of that golden record, you know, now, now starts sort of the, the, the technical aspect of it, right? We've got to go get all that data. So we go source the data. We want to run data through uh, hygiene and data quality routines to ensure it's, uh, you know, it's of the highest quality that we correct or we standardize uh, or we, you know, fill in any sort of missing gaps with that data. Um, in terms of uh, the, the the golden record. The golden record is always based on some uh, some uh, entity, right? You know, traditionally we would talk about it maybe a consumer uh, or an individual a household, uh, but you know, a golden record could be it could be a product golden record. Uh, so there, you know, really that you just got to figure out what that the entity of that golden record is, collect that data, run it through uh, hygiene and, and data quality routines to you know again improve the data, get it to um, you know the best quality. And then you run it through an integration process, right? And that's where you look across those data sources and you, and you do, uh, you identify uh, like entities or similar entities. So again, that could be a product, that could be a person, right? And once you tie those entities together through uh, keying, right? This is, this is you know, matching or um, uh, identity resolution. Uh, then you actually have a view across those data sources of similar entities, right? Where again, product, person, household, and so forth. Uh, once you've done that, now you can begin to use those keys that you've assigned and begin to aggregate data, begin to um, pick the best of across those data sources. So you may pick the best of PII for a customer, right? What's the best way uh, to uh, to 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 uh, personalize the the information, right? First name, last name. What's the best way to send those communications? That may be a physical address, an email address, uh, a, a mobile phone for purposes of SMS, and so forth. So you you know you might pick the best of information using those rules that you determine during the, the process of creating the golden record. And then you may actually do summarizations to say for a given customer, you know, how many, how many times did they shop, visit the website in the last month? How much did they spend in the last month? Or maybe that's 30, 60, 90, uh, 180 and 365 days, right? So those, then those summaries can be created. At this point, you now have a golden record and now that information can be made available to users. That could be marketing, that could be finance, that could be any organization or any group within the organization uh, that can then leverage that information to begin to uh, interact with the customers and, and ultimately deliver, deliver the customer experience that we've been talking about. That all makes good sense. Uh, if we look a little bit at what the actual result of that might be, uh, mm -hmm. we can see that there's a pretty broad range of categories and uh, an even broader range of details of data that might uh, uh, make up that golden record. 
some of that is things that marketers are pretty familiar with and have lots of control over, things that come in from the channels or from a loyalty app or even potentially from a CRM. But there's a lot of information in there too, potentially, that might come from back-end systems. Um, how do we make sure that we're really uh, getting the data that we need for our particular purposes in, in this? That's a great question. You know, really, at the end of the day, this goes back to sort of that process step, right? Once you've determined what are the pieces of information I need to deliver that perfect customer experience or, or, or you know, ensure that we are talking to the right customer about the right information um, at the right time. Okay, that all sort of translates back into, well, we need these pieces of information and it becomes, you know, at the end of the day, it really becomes a, uh, you know, exploration exercise where you're going back in and talking to the various um, aspects of the business that control these systems that provide those, those, those data. And, you know, once you can identify that, then it becomes a, a, you know, an exercise in extracting that information and bringing it into a, a single place where you can process that data. You can, as you as we talked about, right, you can cleanse and standardize and, and, um, uh, and, and, and run hygiene routines on that data and ultimately perform that identity resolution to create uh, the, the single view across all those disparate data sources. I assume in that context that you're sort of mirroring the, the people process part that you talked about within mm -hmm. the software. You're making sure that the software itself can represent the rules and the processing steps and capabilities that are needed in order to, to drive that golden record result that we've been talking about. That's right. So you know, the process will uh, will collect and document and, and gain the necessary uh, buy-in and approval from the organization. Really, the, 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 the software or the technical aspect of the process is taking that information and actually you know, performing those rules, performing those different routines on the data. So, and I, I also assume in this context that um, we can we can essentially build out, extend, change that process over time. So for instance, we're going to talk uh, in part two a little bit about some of the use cases. If we start with one use case that only requires six data sources, we can do that. And then we can come back to this picture and add more data sources on the left and um, uh, change how we do some of the, the internal processing and the aggregation and things. Absolutely. You know, and, and actually you bring up a really good point. It, it, it may be that you actually only tackle one or two use cases instead of trying to tackle the entire uh, series or set of use cases. Um, also, you know, things change, right? New technologies, new channels come into play. Uh, so, you know, that may require a new set of um, uh, elements within the golden record. Also, you know, I always tell people, you never really should rest on your laurels in terms of once you create the golden record, you know, I didn't cover it specifically, but that whole identity resolution process is not meant to be something you sort of build and forget about. Really, it's an iterative process. So you're constantly through things like data stewardship, uh, through, uh, you know, sort of analysis of the results, looking at uh, metrics of, you know, based on that identity resolution process, that you might be tweaking those rules and those thresholds and all of the algorithms that go into creating that, those identities. So really it's not one, something you want to build and forget about, right? It's something that you have to kind of provide care and feeding for uh, over time. And that's not meant to scare you, but again, we just go back to those examples. You're going to have new use cases. You're going to have new channels. You're going to have new data sources. You're going to have new, uh, new metrics or summaries or aggregations that you're going to, going to want to bring in to, uh, to, to provide that customer experience. So it's, it's going to be something that just you're going to be care and feeding for, um, you know, over, you know, as you, uh, as you develop and build the golden record. So we're going to be putting a process in place, essentially, that says these are the steps that are needed to take data and build out the golden record. Is there equivalently a process for actually defining what it is that we need? Do you want to talk a little bit about some of the details that go into the golden record? Yeah, and and you know, really, it, it, we've kind of hit on some of it. But if you if we sort of break it down for you know that sort of process side, you know, I think the use cases probably are um, you know a great place to start. 
Uh, also, when you look at it, you can go into marketing. You know, how are you talking to your customers? What channels are you talking to them on? How do you personalize? Um, what do you use to, in terms of deter, or what what information do you use to determine um, eligibility for a campaign? Right. So, is it transactional history? Is it you know previous reactions or uh, interactions with campaigns? Is it you know if you have loyalty, is it based on those types of things? So, you, you know, really sort of kind of backing into it by looking at use cases, how you currently talk to your customers, how you want to talk to your customers, what kind of experience you want to provide for them. Then once you can do that, now you can start to go back to the business and go, all right, where do I get all that information, all right? Because the reality is that information is probably spread across the enterprise. It's probably in uh, you know, multiple disparate data systems. So now it becomes, you know, it becomes that exercise of talking with the owners of those systems and saying, this is what I need. I think you, you are, you're the person that has that. And they say, yes, it is. And this is, you know, I'll, I'll provide that information for you. So that's sort of where you start. And then again, once you get the data, uh, you know, now becomes the exercise of stitching all of that data together by, by through that identity resolution process, right? I can see that this person has uh, these transactions in my e-commerce system, also in my POS system, and because of, you know, various elements of PII that they've provided, uh, I can now stitch them together and I can see both their online and in-store presence. And now I can actually take those two sources, I can put them together and I can see a more holistic view of, you know, their, their, their spend, um, you know, what kind of products they buy, uh, you know, how many times they visit either the website, you know, or, you know, or my virtual store versus my physical store. That's all great information you can use to tailor the customer experience specific to that, to, to, to that person. That all makes great sense. Does that fit in too with the kinds of digital and sometimes anonymous uh, by intent or just by accident kinds of journeys that, that uh, um, people are taking these days with websites and with various different kinds of apps and um, answering quizzes and gamification and social sites and so on? Absolutely. I mean, you know, the more data you can get and, and through that stitching process, you know, the, the, the better picture you have of how they, they, the, the customer interacts with your business. Um, you know, the, 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 the ability to convert anonymous website visits to known, um, you know, the use of social, you know, there's a whole vast array of data out there. Um, and, but it's only as good as the, the ability for you to, to uh, you know, resolve those identities into a single identity, right? So it's, again, it's that stitching of data from all of those sources to say, oh, I, Chris Tomes, have visited the website here. You know, I was interacting um, uh, with, with Facebook on your Facebook pa uh, page or your site. So you know, it's just that kind of information, but being able to uh, ingest that data and then stitch it through uh, the through the uh, resolution of those identities. Can this extend beyond just uh, individuals to talk about relationships? So I can I can look at an individual in relationship to a household or to an organization that they belong to or some things like yeah. that. Yeah, great question. So you know, really, there's no limit or well, we're. I, it can be any identity or entity within uh, the, the organization. So if you're a B2C, that's most likely traditionally going to be uh, things like uh, an individual and an individual rolls up to a household uh, and then a household rolls up to a residence or an address, right? And so you can have multiple people in a household. You can have multiple households in an address. Uh, so, you know, those are different levels of uh, entity or uh, uh, the different entities within the data. But you also may be a product-based organization. And so you have you know, a rather large product offering and maybe through either acquisition or just different systems have different ways that they identify products. You know, maybe, it's, uh, maybe the e-commerce has a different product scheme than your POS system. So, well, we need to bring those two systems together using uh, identity resolution. We can create a, um, you know, we can try to create a master uh, product ID. But now, and then by stitching that to customers and their transactional behavior, I have a more consistent and a better view of what kind of purchase behavior and what kind of product categories has that customer been purchases, purchasing in, regardless of channel, whether that be in-store or that be on, on the web. 
Yeah, that's it's very interesting. And I'm assuming that in a single system, you might have both products and people. And a lot of the use cases that we're going to talk about will kind of show up at the intersection of um, those two and other kinds of entities. What kinds of things am I interested in? What am mm -hmm. I looking for today? Is it for me or is it for somebody else who's a different member of my household? Yep. You know, just to give you another example, we have uh, we have clients that are in the, um, you know, work in, you know, the automobile insurance and, and, and some other um, uh, services with regards to automobiles. Well, you know, they've created an automobile database because at the end of the day, years come in in four year digit or uh, four digit uh, years, two digit years. Uh, sometimes the make and model are flip flopped. They're misspelled. Um, you know, so when you do that, it's really hard to sort of build and, and be reliant when that data is sometimes incorrect. So they've actually taken that and created a consistent um, or an identity resolution process that I, you know, I consistently identifies the vehicle across year, make, model, and maybe sometimes even the trim. I'm, I haven't looked at it in a while, but, you know, they may even have the, the, the trim level in there. But that allows them to do those sort of analytics and go, well, how many people are we providing services, you know, insurance or, or other type of things, you know, based on a year, make, and model or a year and model or a year and make and, and, and so forth. Um, so, you know, that kind of that kind of power allows you to just see data in a, in a completely different light, especially when you have those sort of data quality issues uh, within your within the organization. This is great information. I'm going to turn it back over to Sue to take us out and we'll talk again in part two. Perfect. Well, thank you, Chris and Steve, for this informative webinar. Again, as a reminder, this is part one of our two part series on the golden record. Join us for part two, what to do with the golden record. If you are interested in learning more about Redpoint Global, please visit us at www.redpointglobal.com. Again, thank you, Chris and Steve, and all of you for joining us today. We look forward to connecting with you soon. Thank you.